hello students so today we will study about the chapter water so before we proceed let ask question from ourselves only can we imagine a life without water no we cannot water is an essential element of nature and is very important for us it covers 71% of the earth's surface the different bodies of water are ocean seas bays river lakes and ponds almost 90% of materials can dissolve in water it is therefore a great solvent now we'll study about water cycle this part is very important and very interesting also so let us understand this process of water cycle through this picture now what is water cycle when sunlight falls on the surface of water body it get heated here in this picture you can see water from the water bodies on the earth get evaporated due to sun's heat this water that evaporate is called water vapor and this process is known as evaporation in evaporation the water get evaporated and it takes it changes its form and become vapor as the vapor rises up in the air it loses its heat and the process of condensation takes place in this process again the vapor it get converted into water this water leads to rain snowfall or sleet the water comes back to the earth surface gets collected in river pond and stream from there the water is carried to the ocean again and from where it is again evaporated due to due to heat sun's heat this is a never ending process and it's known as water cycle in this we will we study that how the water get evaporated it change it forms it rises up cools down it due to rainfall or snowfall again the water get back to the water bodies and get collected on the uh, oceans now the another topic we'll study is distribution of water bodies the distribution of water is different across the globe not all places have the same volume of water and some places even face scarcity of water the best example is chennai chennai is facing in maximum place of chennai is facing scarce scarcity of water we people are very fortunate that we are getting a water every day in our life we are getting water supply and we are getting more than enough water distribution of water bodies is determined by their area and depth the bigger and deeper a water body is the more the volume of water it contains in this picture you can see that only 2.5% is a fresh water and 97.50 is saline this is not a drinkable water how the distribution of fresh water is there how we'll get it 81.6 is the ice caps and the glaciers the ground water is 30.1% and the surface water is 0. 3% and we get 87% of water from lakes 2% from rivers and rest 11% from the swamp so in this picture it is clear that only 2.5% of water are the water is fresh and rest is saline that means salty water now we'll study about oceans what is ocean as we all know a very large water bodies there are five major oceans such as pacific atlantic indian arctic and southern ocean which is also known as antarctic ocean the pacific ocean is the largest ocean unlike rivers or streams ocean have saline water which is unfit for drinking the rivers lakes streams are the source of fresh water we will study about the characteristics of ocean first comes the temperature of the ocean water the temperature of the ocean water is not same everywhere the water is warmer near the equator 
the temperature of the water decreases as we move towards the pole it also decreases with the depth of the ocean why the oct uh, water is warmer near the equator because is it is nearer to the sun next feature is salinity of the ocean water a large amount of salt is dissolved in the ocean which makes it water salty for every 1000 grams of ocean water there is only there is 35 gram of salt dissolved in it and this salinity varies in different part of same ocean children do not think that each and every part of the ocean has the same level of salinity no it varies and as the uh, uh, as it is found that every 100 grams of ocean water contains 35 gram of salt another is ocean circulation unlike ponds lake ocean water is never still there are three different kinds of movement which are generally seen in ocean such as wave tides and currents see as we already read now just now that ocean water is not still it always moves there is a movement in an ocean water and basically there are three different movements which is seen that is waves tides and currents now we'll study one by one about them what is tides tides refer to rise and fall of ocean water twice a day in a rhythmic manner tides occur twice a day they occur at regular interval and why this occur due to the gravitational pull of the moon and the sun on the surface of the earth the water on the earth closer to the moon gets pulled under its gravitational force and causes tides now we'll study about the spring tides and the neap tides what is this as we already studied that it occurs twice a day they occur at a regular interval of time the tides are highest on full moon and the new moon as the sun the moon and the earth are in the same line see children in this picture you can see the new moon as a sun the earth and the sun these are in the same line when these are in the same line then these tides is known as spring tides and it causes the highest tides during this spring tides during the first and last quarter of the moon the surface of the ocean is drawn in diagonally opposite directions by the gravitational pull of the sun and the moon resulting to low tides see neap tide what is the difference between spring tide and neap tide the main difference is in spring tides the waves are highest the tides are highest and in neap tides it resulting in low tides why because over here you can see that the sun and the moon are not in a same line they are diagonally opposite directions by the gravitational pull of the sun and the moon another topic is ocean currents what is ocean currents ocean currents are the stream of water flowing on the surface of ocean in a particular direction so in short we can say the movements of water we consider it we call it as a current these currents can be both cold and warm there are two types of current movements of water that is cold and warm the labrador current is cold current while the gulf stream is the warm current cold current carry water from poles hence the water is cold while warm currents carry water from equator hence the water is warm as i already told you that equator is nearer to the sun equator is a imaginary line which divide the earth into two equal halves so the water current water which carries from the equator that water is warm hence it is referred as a warm current and cold current means the water which is carried from the gulf stream this is the reason why the water is cold hence 
uh, ocean current influence the diff uh, distribution of temperature all over the globe in this picture you can see the movements of oceans is been given over here ocean currents the red arrow shows the warm current and the cold arrow shows the cold current i hope you understood this chapter children thank you and have a good day